Welcome to the show, Sucio Talk, episode 20. Can you believe it? We made it. We made it to episode 20. Only 32 more to go to complete uh, my January or my November goal of uh, having a podcast for a year and being able to do one episode per week. So thank you out there for supporting the show. Once again, anytime you're listening, put on your social media, hashtag Sucio Talk, hashtag Sucio underscore talk, hashtag Sucio Talks. I've had to go with three hashtags because, you know, people write the name of the show in different ways. So we got to capitalize on all of it. All right. Uh, I thank you a lot for doing that. Those uh, listeners that have, you have no idea how much that reaches people, gets me new listeners, uh, you know, new new ears to be able to inspire, um, and a long future for Sucio Talk Podcast. Uh, so I thank all the previous guests and all the future guests and all the listeners who have been getting me guests. And uh, that happened this past time for this episode, um, episode 20. Nick Tamburo, Chef Nick Tamburo of North Block in Yountville. North Block opened up in March. Nick Tamburo took over as a chef after they had that restaurant Redwood, uh, Richard Reddington's restaurant for a long, long time there. He, I believe, moved to New York. I think he has a spot in uh, New York somewhere. And Nick moved out from New York to, from Momofuku Group, um, where he was a sous chef at Co. Momofuku Co, sous chef and uh, executive chef of Momofuku Nishi. He's worked with a plethora of people that I have known and have passed throughout my life. Um, Eli, Eli Ravine, what up? I met him literally the first day of of Johnson & Wales. Uh, He ended up being the chef of uh, Momofuku Co for a long time. Uh, He lives in Sydney now, spear fishes with a camera on his gun. Looks like Call of Duty in the bottom of the ocean. Shout out to you. They, he just had a baby. So uh, big moves for him. Congratulations to him and his wife. Uh, Eli Ravine, I miss you, man. I'll uh, I'll come out and visit you at some point. And then we got Unjo Park. Unjo Park used to be um, the chef of Momofuku Kawi. That closed due to pandemic. Uh, I had the pleasure of eating there before my Europe trip last year. It was delicious. So thank you very much. Um, Unjo, I hope to see you in the future. Uh, she really did great. Her and Josh Pinsky came through to uh, Potluck at the Charter Oak uh, when things were open still, and uh, we had a great time. I got to know her. We really hit it off. And uh, here's a here's a fun fact: she walked in on one of my cooks taking a shit. <laughs> uh, I'm only telling that story because it happened to me the other day. <laughs> I'm a personal chef and uh, was cooking this dinner. It was a big birthday party, 76th birthday party. Um, for a man named John Morris. All right. This birthday party was for a man named John Morris. And let me tell you why John Morris is important. He invented the sports bar. Okay. Back in the 70s when no one was doing this shit, he was siphoning satellite um, service through the rooftop of his restaurant. And put big screen TVs in his restaurant and was the first sports bar to have ever been conceptualized in the United States. Uh, His name is John Morris and he's going to be on this show at some point. Uh, I just have to take the time to sit down with him. But I've met him through, uh, he's a a buddy of the the people that I work for, uh, personal chefing. And he's awesome, you know, so me and him blow blow it down at the end of the night burn some trees and talk about old restaurant stories and um there's nothing better than hanging out with with older people you know they have much more wisdom much more perspective um the right ones anyway so shout out to him john morris remember that started the sports bar okay so just before you go ahead take credit whoever you are out there who will take credit remember it was him uh emma conroy shout out to you 
uh, girlfriend slash, I don't know if she's his wife, uh, Nick Tamburo's significant other, partner in crime. Emma Conroy reached out to me, uh, told me she loved the podcast. She's a fellow Rhode Islander herself. So when she was, uh, she looked and saw that I had done some uh, Rhode Island chefs. So she was listening. She loved the show. She let me know, hey, would you like to talk to Nick Tamburo? I said, hell yeah. You know, the new chef of North Block, um, Napa, Napa's food scene changing, you know, before our very eyes. Uh, it's a very, it's a very cool thing to have, uh, young chefs starting in a place that is already highly regarded and already sort of has, you know, uh, high ranking chefs in the area. So it's going to be cool for him to, to sort of carve out his name and his legacy in, in the same town that others have carved out a legacy of greatness, you know, i.e. Thomas Keller, um, Christopher Costow, um, you know, now Eric Anderson, you know, back in the day, it's Jeremy Fox at Ubuntu, you know what I'm saying? So it was like all these places that help shaped Napa cuisine or what it is today. You know, um, so, but let me move on here. So Emma Conroy, she let me know she had a man that was a chef that is hungry for it, that wants to be successful, that's making his, his first move as a sort of a, a lone executive chef, right? Because when you were part of a restaurant group and you moved to another restaurant to be executive chef you sort of already know the systems so it's not any any new like sort of learning except for now you deal with the money so that's sort of you know what you have to deal with but at the end of the day like momofuku is a beast of a restaurant group like they have you know all these resources at their disposal uh when you come to a smaller place um you sort of have more responsibility which is which is nice so I'm sure that he's going to learn a lot through this experience and, um, again, you know, uh, develop his food. I actually had dinner uh, right before the podcast, and he uh, he had this half-roasted chicken with rice under the skin, which is a new way to do chicken and rice for me. I've never had it that way. I'm sure it's traditional, but uh, I loved it. It's delicious. A new take on chicken and rice, and, uh, you know, chicken and rice is one of those combinations that will never uh, go out of style. So... You should also watch this Documentary Now episode. It's hilarious. It's on Netflix, I believe. Documentary Now, it's a spoof on documentaries. And they do one called Juan's Chicken and Rice. And it's fucking hilarious. It's um, Bill Hader's in it. And basically, it's a Michelin star kitchen. But it's three Michelin stars in the middle of the forest. It's like 50 miles from the nearest road. So you actually need to hike there. It's pretty pretty hilarious. So check that out. Uh Congratulations again to my boys, Shark Tank. Went in there, laid it out for the Sharks. Got a deal with Mark Cuban. Uh, now they're all over the news. So, you know, this thing's starting to pop off uh, more so than it has been. So I can't wait to uh, take this journey with them. As you know, I am Chef Ambassador of Truffle Shuffle, here to represent um, and showcase all the things that they are doing uh, in order to be a better company, a better team, uh, and be able to um, positively influence the community of which they're from. Uh, they did a drive-in showing of the, the show Shark Tank, and uh, they donated all the proceeds to the Alameda Food Bank. So shout out to Truffle Shuffle Gang making it happen out here for, for those in need. Uh, also, Ian Rosentraw, he was he did a little cameo the last time uh, on the Truffle Shuffle Shark Tank episode. So I'll have him on soon enough. Uh, but before then, you guys will hear from Sarah Rundle. Uh, that's uh, Jason's partner in crime, wife, also co-founder of Truffle Shuffle. Um, I don't have a lot of front of the house on the podcast, but that's all going to change. Um, I did one with Sarah Rundle and, you know, their life is very different, but it's the same grind. 
right? It's it's a little less physical than ours, meaning like, you know, not to use their hands all day, but they're using way more brain power than we are. And I always like applaud front of the house and servers. I always tell them you're better than me. You know, as they, they smile in the face of rudeness and, you know, they, they never, great servers never lose composure no matter what situation they're in. It's truly a hard position, you know, um, cause you're getting flack from the chef, you're getting flack from the guests, you know? So it's like, everybody's like, you're like a pinball. It's like tuk, 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 just taking different directions at all times. And, you know, if it was me, like sometimes I, I, you know, I'd be at the pass, I'd be giving plates to a server to walk and I'd be like, all right, this is going there. This is going there. This is going there. As soon as I throw away the ticket, I forget what I just said. And they have to retain that information. Right. And, the way they're holding plates in their hands and they know exactly what, you know, position to go to and they're serving it with the right hand, with the right posture. Um, and also while being vigilant of their other tables while they're serving that table to take care of their guest needs. Like that's, that's absolutely insane to me. You know, uh, I, I couldn't do it as well as they can. Can I serve? Can I, you know, put on a face? Oh yeah, for sure. But, I think that uh, it's something to be said about people that are really, really talented at uh, at doing those types of things. Um, there was an article I read about a, a man who had gone to eat at a bar and he was sort of smushed in this chair. And he said that he doesn't know how they did it, but he felt good even though he was eating in a very crowded, uncomfortable spot only because the server was so accommodating and lovely to him and he was left like how how is this person doing this you know and that is sort of the question that i ask when i do podcasts and when i go out to find a guest for the show how are you doing this you know whatever they're doing in their career or life also another shout out to Justin Kissenberger uh, on Instagram, Justin Kissenberger. He writes, dude, thanks for doing this. Love these stories. It's such a cool thing to hear chef's backstories that you hear about and that there is no one right way to do this. This one was cool because I'm moving to D.C. from Asheville by August and Pineapple and Pearls and Reverie are my top places to go. Definitely reaching out to Joe now. So there you go. This young cook heard the podcast. He's moving from Asheville to D.C. And now he knows who's going to be the chef of Pineapple and Pearls. And it's changing his course to his career. So, you know, I'm not going to say that this is all because of the podcast, but I'm thinking that it has a little bit to do with it, right? He, he reached out and he said, hey, <laughs> I'm going to do this because I heard of this, right? So... I just can't. I'm so happy that uh, that this podcast is positively influencing people, and I'm so happy that you uh, you guys choose to listen every day. You know, tune this on. So shout out to you guys. You know, all you hard workers out there, all you you people supporting the show and um, getting yourself amped up for the day, working out, whatever it is that you do while you listen to Susio talk. Another shout out is uh, Farm Stand Saint Helena on Instagram. Farm Stand Saint Helena wrote, "I thought your name was David Susio," <laughs> and I said to someone, "Hey, you know David Susio?" And they're like, "No, do you mean David Galati?" <laughs> so Susio is not my last name. Okay, just so you know, that be Susio. Like I said, it's a state of mind. Um, Gijoti is my last name, or as they said at all my graduations, Gilati, Gilatoy, Gilatine, you know, whatever whatever uh, pronunciation they, they wanted to use. And I thought it, it brought me back to this other time where um, D. Lin, uh, one of the Psalms on uh, the movie Psalm, he was at the restaurant 
And uh, the GM told me he was looking for me. And he's like, hey, is uh, Chef uh, Suchio here? And I'm like, wow. He may think that Susio is Italian. And my last name is Suchio. Which wouldn't be a bad name. But anyway, moving on. Episode 20. All right. Of Susio Talk. Here to entertain you guys. I'll see you next Monday. All right. Next Monday is, um, it should be fun. Um, I got a, a long, a little bit of a long journey this week. I'm going uh, to do some podcasts. Actually, tomorrow night, I'm doing a podcast with Andy Dubrava after dinner at Rustic Canyon. So you have that one to look out for. And just remember, as I record them, they're probably like two, three, maybe four weeks out now, right? Just because I'm, I'm uh, loading up on episodes. So, but I've been everywhere, man. And, and this, uh, this journey of, you know, getting on the road and driving up to San Francisco about 10 times now in the past two months and going to LA all the time and just traveling and moving. Uh, it's been amazingly inspiring. The people watching has been awesome. And pretty soon I'll have another adjective then awesome to describe something. All right, with that, I leave you. Sucio Talk, episode 20. All righty. Here we go. Sitting here at the North Block Hotel in Yantville. That's a... Uh, a city of Napa, I guess. <laughs> you call it a city. Yeah, a yeah. borough of Napa. <laughs> Thomas Keller Town. Yeah. The French Laundries in this town. Uh, it's what it's mostly known for. But in the future, we'll be known for the new restaurant that just opened up on the block. Um, what are you guys calling it? It's just called North Block. North so. Block. So you just stayed with the, the name of the hotel. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like one whole encompassing thing. Got you. Got yeah. you. Got you. So, Chef, introduce yourself to everybody. Uh, I'm Nick, Nick Tamburo. Nick um, Tamburo. Yeah. From, um, you come from New York, right? Yeah. Well, I just moved here from New York City. Uh, but I grew up in Boston, Boston area. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah. So cool. So, you know, this is what you're doing now. And you know that on this show, we're going to go all the way to when you were a little infant. Um, <laughs> so what's your background like? Where are you from? Uh, so yeah, I grew up. Uh, South Shore, Massachusetts. Okay. Um, like 20, 30 minutes south of Boston. All right. Um, so yeah, that was good. What did your life. parents do? Uh, they both worked in the city. Um, so my dad worked for the MBTA for the for the subway. Okay. And uh, my mom, she worked uh, she worked at a bank for a little bit, and then she was working at a at a law firm for a bit in the yeah. city. So yeah, they were kind of like back and forth a lot. So it was good because I got to spend a lot of time in the city. Uh, you know, on the weekends as a kid and stuff like that. Awesome. Um, yeah. Fuck yeah. Good. So, um, what was your, your food childhood like? What were you eating? Um, well, both, uh, you know, my dad's family is like, they're pretty Italian. Pretty yeah. Okay. Italian, All right. right. There you go. So some of that stuff, but, uh, not like super Italian. We didn't do like Sunday gravy and stuff like a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, both my parents are pretty good cooks. Like my mom would always like cook recipes out of like magazines and shit. Like if she got like, uh, you know, house house type magazines, yeah, like for mom sure. type magazines. She'd always like try new recipes and stuff like that. Um, so we ate pretty well. Um, they both cooked. It was like kind of we all ate ate dinner as like a family every night. Yeah, it was like important for the to them. Yeah, so that was good. Um, and I think we we went out out to eat like a good bit. Um, you know, in the city and stuff too. Like my dad had an office in Chinatown, so like okay, we would go and eat gotcha. like, dim sum and stuff like that. So, so they were you pretty were adventurous. Yeah, yeah. I can um, see that. Which is good. They, like, introduced us to, like, a lot of different stuff. Yeah, like, early kids. on. Yeah, yeah. Did you find yourself uh, sort of accepting that, or were you like, no, this isn't what I want to eat? Yeah, I mean, my brother and I, we were, like, we were all about it. Yeah. Eating weird yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. for sure. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, like, chicken feet in Chinatown <laughs> and stuff like that. There you go. You know? We weren't going anywhere fancy, but we got to eat, like, different types of food yeah, and yeah. stuff. So cool, cool. Good, yeah. And then uh, what were your interests as a child? Did you like cooking? Were you cooking or no? Um, I would like help my mom. Yeah, sometimes like prep and stuff. Gotcha. Um, yeah, a little bit of cooking. Uh, I don't know. When I was really young, we made a lot of like home movies. Okay, and stuff. Very like cool. That, you you know? and your brother? Yeah, my brother. Our friends, like neighborhood kids. Kind okay, of thing. like when we were like 
you know, this is like before high school, like when we were really young. Yeah, yeah. So, what kind of what kind of movies are we talking about here? Know, Action adventure like, movies? Yeah, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stand by me. Yeah. You're like <laughs> there you go. Um and this I guess filmmaking, that was something that you were interested in? Like for real? I guess it ended up being weirdly enough, like later on, um, like after I finished high school. Um, I went to Emerson College in the city in Boston. Yeah. And uh, well, I kind of like thought I was going to go for like music producing stuff. Okay. Like, sound, sound engineering. Yeah. Because um, in high school, I played in like a lot of bands and stuff like that. That was like, that's what I thought I was going to do, I guess. Just like playing a band. Playing a band. <laughs> Heard that. Much, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Played in like a couple of punk bands and stuff. Um, so you're into the punk, the punk rock. Yeah, that's my shit. Is that your, yeah? yeah? Who, what, what kind of bands are we talking about? I mean... Everything from like like nineties emo I really like a lot. Okay. Like American football, Cap and Jazz, that whole whole thing and and then also like you know, I'll still listen to Black Flag and Yeah. Like, Bad like Brains that. and yeah, Misfits yeah. and that. Yeah, totally. All right. Um so that's kinda like what I was into and uh so yeah, I went to school in the city because like I still had like my band and stuff, so I wanted to like you know, stay close to home so I could keep playing music. With yeah, yeah. And, uh yeah, so then I ended up gravitating towards like filmmaking and photography kinda like later, like during school and stuff like that got you so and so you you're like i'm gonna do a music career and then you're like this isn't working out i'm gonna do a i'm gonna be a and then i like, i think i thought yeah right <laughs> i think i was like oh i'll just like stay in academia i'll go get my mfa and then i'll teach like college like yeah like, college level like art stuff yeah but, uh, it's funny with yeah. the things you think about when you're young because yeah, yeah, you're, like, so. you're like you're like i'm just gonna get a job you know, like I'm right. going to be a teacher, you know, or whatever. But then uh, as you get a little wilder, you know, you're like, what if I just cooked? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, when did you start working in restaurants? Um, That was like, I had done, like when I was in high school, I worked at like a bagel place. Okay. Um, Which was cool. Like, I mean, mostly I just like made sandwiches and like coffee and like did the cash register. Yeah. And then I, I ended up baking bagels like a little bit later there. Um, But then... And, and, like, during college, like, I worked at, like, a, like a coffee shop and, like, stuff like yeah. that here and there. Just, like, they were just jobs. But then, like, my senior year of college is when I got, like, really into food or, like, junior or senior year of yeah. college. And then, um, so then I only had, like, kind of part-time classes towards the end there. So yeah. I just, like, started cooking, like, part-time. Okay. Where'd you um, go? What restaurant? This restaurant in, in Cambridge, Mass. Uh, so that's, like, Cambridge is, like, right there. Yeah, yeah. And, are you from Rhode Island? Is that I'm, no, well, I lived in Rhode Island a lot, but yeah. I used to pick up a lot of weed in Boston. Oh, so yeah. I know, so I know, familiar. I know. Yeah, yeah. for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I always lived like Cambridge side of things for the most part. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I worked at this restaurant called Evu, as in like extra virgin olive oil. Okay. <laughs> Very, it's uh, actually the only place I worked at. Is that how they had you open. pronounce it? Evu. Evu? Yeah. Or yeah, was it Evo? Evu. Evu. Yeah. Evu. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Because a lot of people say Evo. Oh really? Yeah. Like one. I've never o? heard it say Evo. Yeah. Oh, even well, even me. There's yeah. two O's and I go Evo. Right. Oh, yeah. Weird. I yeah. don't know. I feel like everyone said Evo at the time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. man, man we, now you got me thinking. We got to dissect that more. <laughs> yeah, we got to look into this. Susie, talk talk about the real issues out here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I started working there, which was cool because I had like zero experience. Yeah. You know? Like. But I, I don't know. I really wanted to do it. They gave me a shot. So, like, I was at home, like, practicing, like, my knife cuts, like, you know, like trying to, like, learn how to burn wads and shit. And, like, I don't know. They hired me <laughs> yeah. to do that. So, that was that was cool. Very cool. Uh, yeah. How long did you stay there? Only about six months. Got which you. I kind of regret. I kind of wish I gave them, like, the full year, like, you're yeah. supposed to, you mm-hmm. know? But at that point, you didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. So. Who smartened you up? Oh, man. Well, then my next job, I worked, uh... At this, it was a new opening. Okay. Uh, this restaurant. Wow. In Second restaurant opening. New yeah. opening. Yeah. Okay. That's like because I. That's why I left because I was like, oh, I want to do. Like, okay. That. You want? I got you. You, you want to be challenged, and also the the best part. But I about, wasn't good enough to like. Yeah. Be challenged. Like I didn't even know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> that place, so. But the best part about opening a restaurant is everybody starts at the same level. Yeah. No yeah. matter even like, you know, higher skilled people will. Right. You know. Everybody's yeah. on the same keel. So that's cool about opening. Yeah. Uh, what did you do during the opening? What were you doing? I was like garmage, like fry station. It was only three stations. It was okay. like grill, saute, and then like GM, like fry station. 
Okay. So yeah, I was doing that. And the sous chef there, uh, my friend Brad Shannon, we're still pretty close to this day. He like, he was the guy that kind of like show me the ropes, like for real. Yeah. For real. Cause it was like, it was a lot of times it was just like me and him there prepping. Okay. So it was just kind of like, you know, he used to like break down a, a case of chickens and have me time him. Be like, look how fast I can do this. And you know, I don't know. It was good. And then like eventually when I got good, then we would like race on a case of chicken. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That kind of thing. So it was like good to really like, just like spend the whole day with him and he like show me shit and yeah. he had been doing it for a while, you know. I think the good. the case of chicken race is a race <laughs> that happens in a lot of restaurants. Yeah. And nobody talks about it. I used to yeah. race uh this guy Justice Depke. He actually ended up I think he works at Gisa Juan in Vegas. Oh, shit. Damn. But um he worked with me at Tululan Thames in, in Rhode Island and uh yeah, we would go we would go head to head. But our battle started you had to go get it from the walk-in, which that is downstairs. Yeah, 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 bring it up the stairs. <laughs> like, good. And like then you that, had to break yeah. down your box, too. That was the thing. Oh, like, yeah. You can't just leave your – yeah, everything <laughs> – like, your your station's cleaned, and yeah. then you finish. I like that, but, that method. That's yeah, for good. sure. Because, you know, it's like it's hard to claim victory when you look at your cutting board. It's just like chicken <laughs> like shrapnel, like right? <laughs> yeah. So it's like, fuck. Um, so you learned a lot from that guy, and how long did you stay at that restaurant? Um, so after the, it opened so i did that i did the full year you did the full the, year did the how long the from year. when you started to the opening oh you mean like how long like pre-opening did we have? yeah 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 oh man this is so long ago it's like nine years ago ten years ago i don't know maybe like a week two weeks two weeks and then boom open maybe maybe it could have been a week got you so fast. you basically got there they trained you on the dishes and then Go yeah, to work. Yeah, okay. it wasn't like a long pre-opening. Heard so. that. Heard that. Yeah. Now nowadays yeah. it's like four years before a restaurant. <laughs> like Imagine. you know, I'm yeah. curious to know, and I'm I'm gonna ask you later how long this took to come to fruition. I'm Not sure. Long enough. Uh, it's still yeah. coming. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Um. So you stay there for a while, and then yeah. what, what do you say to yourself? Sort of like, okay, I want to be a chef or a good chef, or yeah. at this point, do you just want to be a cook and fucking party? No, I want – because, like, I feel like I had – I kind of came to it not, like, late, but I started cooking when I was, like, 21. Oh, got, got it's you. Like yeah. kind of late. Yeah, it's three right? years. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So – Well, you get those people that are like, I was 14 when I started. Right, You're like, I, I was, can't compete with that guy. Yeah, you know, right? it's like yeah. anytime I think of uh, – what's his name? Grant, uh, Grant Ackett's, it's like uh, he got cancer on his taste buds. Right. And he's still a three star chef. I'm like, I, I'm, you know, can't compete. You can't compete with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta make your own lane. Yeah, yeah. you know. So uh, yeah, so I started cooking kind of late. So I feel like when I got into it, I was like, I knew that I wanted to to do it. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Definitely had a lot of second thoughts throughout the years, though. Oh, for sure. For sure. I mean, you like, you know, you're like, that's something. Should I that, just walk away from all this? Yep, that's something that plagues you. Does like, that ever go away? I don't think it goes away. Doesn't go away. Doesn't go away. Some people have to know, though, that it's like what they want to do, no matter what. Right? Yeah, I think uh, I've come to that conclusion. <laughs> like the answer is always yes. Yeah. So, whatever you're that upset about, uh, you know, you yeah. just find a way to to get through to it, to get over, or like yeah, you right. know, or figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Basically, it but, is funny um, how that works, though. But maybe that's like the same for like every career. It, I think it is. I think you when you're think when about- you're when you're trying to be the best at something or trying to be great, yeah. like you got balls fucking trying to be a chef in the same town as fucking Thomas Keller. I'm sorry. <laughs> just kind of happened there. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that, like, like it, that's like, you know, showing up to a, to a, a city where there's already like a champion and you're like, I'm an amateur boxer. You're like, right. I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. Right. But right. at the end of the day, um, you know, the, the runway is so open for you here. It's mm-hmm. wild, so I'm, I'm. But I keep skipping ahead here. So oh, right. yeah, let's, yeah. let's stay. Let's stay. Uh, uh, wait, ten we, years back. What were we talking about? Fifteen years ago. Oh, about uh. Oh yeah, cooking. Yeah. Restaurant. So I was like, yeah, I was like into it. You know, like yeah, definitely had a lot of second thoughts about it, and you know, like uh, everyone I went to school with, like they weren't cooking because I went to like art school, so yeah. everyone else is like doing their thing or whatever, and I'm like, you know, working like. 60 hours a week yep. just like can't, no vacation can never hang out yeah like, they're having a barbecue so that was like, going to work guys for sure yeah that part is tough definitely that was the that was probably the the worst of it yeah um i always enjoyed working in the morning yeah. because you're in before anybody is awake and then you come back when everybody's sleeping 
<laughs> so yeah. you never feel bad about what they're doing. Right. The yeah, worst, yeah, yeah, the worst shifts I had started at two. <laughs> right. Like, oh, we're going to the beach. When are you going? One. You're like, it's 8 a.m. right now. Why don't we just go right now? You know? And like, yeah. nah, we're not doing that. Yeah. So, so, um, so they, yeah, then this guy, Brad, my, the sous chef I worked for, for with a long time, he had worked at, um, you know the restaurant Radius it used to be in Boston. No, so Michael Schlau was the chef owner. Okay, uh, he won James Beard like back in like oh, two thousand one or something. All right, like, best chef I'll check it out. Whatever. What is it? What's uh, the name again? Radius. It's not open anymore. Radius. Yeah. All right. But, so I went to work there because um, he had worked there, and I was like, you know, I respected him. I was like, yeah. I want to see like what this is all about. Where and you came from? That was the first like fine dining restaurant I worked at, um, and that was like the real like. Uh, like oh shit! Like this is actually like really hard. Like you like know what Gordon I mean? Ramsay style. <laughs> the chef was like the chef was pretty intense. Yeah, like, I mean he was strict. That was the kind of thing where like someone like drops something or you like close the low boy too hard and he's just like fucking staring you down. Like who the fuck did that? Yeah, you yeah. Know what I, mean? I hear you. I Whereas hear you. like the other kitchens were like they were like pretty good restaurants. They weren't like diners, but like it was you know more of the pirate ship. Pirate ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. Sure. So this close, was like close the, the low boys with your feet. And, yeah, this you is know. the first place where like. You know, service starts, you put, like, the white tablecloth on the pass. Okay, you know, got you. You got the green tape. Yeah. Yeah, that whole thing. So, um, but it was, and I only was there for a couple of months because then I, then I moved away after okay. that. So Why'd you move? Um, well, actually, I moved to Portland, Oregon briefly with, like, an ex-girlfriend. Um, so a girl was like, hey, if you love me, you will move over here. And you were like, no, yeah, it wasn't dude. like an ultimatum. <laughs> we were just like, yeah, you know, we're going to do this. Like went to school in Boston, like time to go yeah. do something else. Like I never, we never been to Portland. It was like, fuck it. Like, let's just go. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. So what made you leave? I don't know. I think like a lot of my friends had moved to, had moved away. Like okay. after college too. So there was like not really a whole lot going on. All right. Um, so yeah. And yeah, so I, I left there like kind of abruptly, but I mean, that was like, uh, yeah, I guess that's my what... first taste of like the like a, a hard restaurant, you know, and I feel like I didn't really come to you know like meet the challenge. Yeah, you didn't achieve. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean it was fine, like you know, but uh, I feel like I was kind of like, whoa, this is like yeah. a lot. I mean, you got to. It's like at those restaurants, you have to get the dog shit beat out of you for a couple of years before you right. feel the okay. Now I'm better. No, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Because for a long time, you know, in that drive the way to work, you're like. That stomach yeah. feeling, oh, the yeah. knot, you know? Yep. But I also feel that you need that, and that's how you know you're getting better. Yeah, that's what Not I, necessarily yeah. the abuse. Yeah. You know, but the if, pit uh, in the stomach. Yeah. Dave Chang used to always say, he's like, if you don't wake up every morning feeling like you're going to throw up, like, you're doing something wrong. Exactly. Like, you got to have that feeling. Yeah, like, yeah. To know yeah. you're going in the right direction. Exactly. Like, so. I, might, <laughs> I might fall on my face, dude, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. um... So you go to Portland, Oregon, and what makes you move away from Portland? Me and the girl broke up. Okay, so, so you go like, with the girl, and boom. Yeah, you yeah. Leave. she stays. She stays. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So that was easy. Where yeah. do you go from there? So then I went to New York. Okay. Because all my friends from Boston were in New York. Were so, they living yeah. in the city, Brooklyn, Bronx? Yeah, Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah, mostly like Bushwick area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I was like, yeah, you know, me and this girl broke up. Like, I want to be around my friends. Like, people, you know, I need like... Yeah, yeah. I need to go out and get fucked up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, yeah, I moved to New York. Um, what year was this? Yeah. Uh, maybe 2012. 2012. Got you. I think so, yeah. And then, so you're at... Where do, well, You're in New York. Do you yeah. have a job before you move there? No. So I went, I moved. Oh, no, I lived at it with some, like, random people. Like, Craigslist people. Okay. Or something. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I started working. I worked at some, like, crappy restaurant in Brooklyn for, like, a month. Yeah. Really hated it. And then uh, and then I ended up going to Momofuku Noodle Bar. Okay. So that was your, yeah. that was, like, your way into the Momofuku Club. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. How long were you at Noodle Bar totally? For a year. Oh, got you. Yeah. Um, what was, you know, Noodle Bar at that time was popping. Yeah, it was, <laughs> you it was know? a good time to get in there. It wasn't like, you know, maybe it wasn't like the golden years. It was like kind of like a little bit after that. But uh, but it was a good crew, you know. Yeah. It was like, it was like a real restaurant, you know. Yeah. Like, we were always doing new dishes. And like the chef that was there at the time, this guy, Sean Heller, um, him and his two chefs were awesome because they they saw it as like a really good like teaching kitchen so like 
we had the one, you know, you had your, like a noodle station, like bun station, which is pretty like, didn't really change that much. Pretty simple. They were kind of like the beginner stations. But then like the saute station or gamage, they would kind of like throw new dishes on there, like to teach the cooks, like how to do stuff. Like, oh, yeah. you never roasted meat to temp before? All right, we're going to put this, this pork chop on or whatever. Oh, fuck yeah. Or like they would start with like someone new one on the station to start with easy stuff. Like, oh, some like steamed clams or like, you know, this like sauteed vegetable dish. And then they would like crank add, it up a notch. Add, add more add, to add it. More add more stuff. Add it. more, gotcha. add more. Kind of like, or even be like, hey, like, what do you want to work with? Like, what would be cool? Very to, cool. You know, so that was, that was cool. Um, so you guys almost as cooks had a little bit of autonomy on the menu a little bit. A little, a little bit. bit, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we got to play around with some stuff. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of like the, the chefs, like just kind of like throwing stuff at you and like, you know, teaching you these techniques kind of like one by one. Yeah. So it was a good like learning opportunity for you. And know. how involved is Chang in all this? Um, at Noodle Bar, I mean, I didn't see him that often. I was a cook, so like I, we were never, I mean, he would come in every once in a while, maybe come in for family meal, talk shit to some people. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, I remember like, uh, I was like on my station, I was like shaving garlic on the mandolin and I was like, you know, I'd get to the nub and like kind of toss it away. And he like gave me shit about throwing it away. He's like, why don't you use it for family meal? I was like, all right, dude, like, sure. It makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah. He's yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. Got you. Got you. And uh, did you know that you were going to work there for a year? Did you say I'm going to work here for a year or is that such sort of what happened? Um, did you get another opportunity when the year was up? I think, yeah, I think a year is, like, the most that I wanted to do there. Okay. Like, I was, I think I knew, like, you know, maybe, like, four months into it that that was sort of, like, you know, finish, yeah. do the year, and then we'll finish, figure yeah, out what's sure. next, you know? Because um, when I started, when I applied to work for Momofuku, I thought I wanted to work at, like, Co. Yeah. And they were like, ah, uh, here's a job in Noodle yeah. Like, you, you can do this. You want to work with, uh, on the table, so. with Eli. Yeah. You know Eli? Yeah, we were just talking about you the yeah, other day. Fuck yeah, I love Eli. <laughs> yeah, man. Eli, he probably He's won't... He's living the good life. He probably right won't lo- like me to say this, but he... So... <laughs> I'm going to tell him to listen to this. <laughs> during college, during college, um, I was at the the height of selling weed, right? Mm-hmm. And then we get a note on our car outside that says, uh, the neighbors, we know what you're doing, stop oh, what shit. you're doing, or we're going to call the cops. And I said... All Did right. you know that that's what they were talking? Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, dude, we were it having fucking ten to twenty people come through. Oh shit! A day, like, oh, wow. d- d- ask Eli. He'll, yeah. he'll oh, let he you was, know. He was living there. Well, he, he was. He was one of the people that was coming every day, right? <laughs> so, so then, that's all of a sudden, uh, I get this note, and I'm like, I need somebody to push this product. So I basically would front him ounces and he would <laughs> sell them and then I'd go pick up my money and oh, then shit. give him so he more. he was your middleman? He was my middleman, oh, for sure. Damn. For the first one. Wow. Yeah, he was a G, straight up. Damn. He used to, he used to rock this apartment complex. The whole, oh, yeah. everybody used to come, you know, how easy is that? You just wow. get out of your dorm. Just walk down the hall. Go back right? down the hall, yeah. It's damn. amazing. So, you know, because I saw the opportunity in that and I was like, yeah. You need, please help me because <laughs> I didn't want to get arrested. So then you were no more dealing out of the house. No more that. dealing out of the house after yeah. that. I mean, we did it a little bit and I, I basically, I got a bike and I would just deliver where yeah. I could and drive. And then, uh, I ended up giving most of my business to him and I had two other guys who would also help me out. Nice, um, man. but that's for David podcast number two. That's a good life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. So. Man, where the hell are we? We, we got off Eli. Um, oh, Mofuku. Oh, yeah. That's where Mofuku. you wanted to work. Yeah, yeah. So so when you when you go to leave Noodle Bar after the year, are you like, I want to work at Co now? Uh, I did, but instead uh, I went to Stage at Indewolf. Um, okay. In Belgium, yeah. How long was your stage? Uh, three months. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, it was cool because, like, I met a, real, a lot of really good friends at Noodle Bar, like, we were all kind of the same age. I think I was probably like I was probably like twenty three. Yeah, so we were, it was a good time to be a young cook and yeah, a big we were like yeah, we'd been go till four a.m. Yeah, exactly. Like every night, yeah. like we would go to this bar, the Redhead, that was like around the corner, and then like Sambar was like a couple blocks away. So you got the Sambar crew, and like Hearth was across the street, so the Hearth crew would always go there. And so it was good to, like to meet like all these other cooks and stuff. And yeah, I feel like in Boston, I never really saw like that much of a community. So there wasn't me, any networking. What's well, up? All the restaurants yeah. were pretty far away from each other. In Boston, is what I realized, yeah, yeah, and the subway closed at midnight. 
That was the what? fucking kicker. Yeah, dude. Oh, I was just about Even- to compliment you on your subway system in Boston. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. It's but that's nice. why it's nice because they close it at 12. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even before, I think. Maybe even before. So, yeah, it was the thing where, like, after work in Boston, we would go, it's like, do we go to the bar and I pay for a cab home or do I just go home right now? It's yeah. like, you have to, like, be it's like, probably what better do I want to do? Home. Yeah. There, I mean, there's so, some places that you don't go out. Yeah. Like here in Napa Valley. <laughs> I mean, you're lucky you got ponchos right across yeah, man, the street. I'm waiting for them to open up. That's the that's the classic joint right there. You're gonna be drinking with all the all the French laundry dudes. Yeah, over there. It's a good spot, man. Um, um, so, so yeah. Anyway, so I met all these people and like we kind of. It was cool because we all like made these plans like after we left Noodle Bar to go stash. Like, gotcha. One of my friends she went to Attica. Uh, one of my guys went to Dom. Uh. Someone else went to uh, Gordon Ramsay Hospital Road. So oh, we all cool, had these cool. like plans. So like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So it was like, it was cool to like kind of like, I don't know, push each other. Yeah, like, yeah be, cool be in that community. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. I mean, yeah. it's, when when you're surrounded by people that want to be better, you inherently want to get better. Yeah. Just yeah. even if you kind of don't have that passion in you, you're yeah. like, oh, well, maybe I should. You well, know, that was like, something. I never like, at first when I start, first got in kitchens, like I don't consider myself to be like a competitive person. Like I never really like, like sports or anything like yeah, that yeah. so i was kind of like i'm just like a chill guy whatever so like that, <laughs> that environment for me at first was like really intense yeah but yeah you know it was and then good. so so it seems to me like um you're obviously a very nice person oh, and <laughs> you know what i mean like basically and then they probably told you like at some point hey toughen up you gotta be an asshole yeah you gotta yeah, be an right? asshole at least a little bit yeah yeah, yeah. you gotta be right got you. yeah did that happen um, that yeah. talk um, or were they know. like, eh, he's pretty, he's pretty chill. I'm not sure. Yeah, but yeah, no. you get definitely, it. definitely when I became a sous chef. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. At some point in your career, you, you have that, you, ha- you have that talk. Yeah, you know, like you can't just be nice to everyone. Like this is work. Yeah. Work is work. That's true. Um, um, so you went to stage at End of Wolf. How was yeah. that? Because I've heard many different stories. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. kind of, you know, it was awesome. Yeah, it was great, man. I mean. It's probably the hardest I've ever worked in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what they say. You're working you're like sixteen brutal, hours a day. Dude. Oh yeah, fucking. And yeah, so I like went there. Like I think Kobe like posted something on Twitter. Like, oh, we need stagiaires, and they had housing. So I was like, that's really? like, the main thing I was looking for. I was like, want to go to Europe? And there needs to be housing because like I don't have money. Yeah, you know, to put myself up, so I couldn't go to like, you know, go to Copenhagen or something. Yeah, you got to pay for an apartment. Um, so so you know, how did you live? Because did they pay you on the stage? No. No. Okay. Um, but we lived, they had this like stagiaire house, like it was like 10 minute walk from the yeah. restaurant down the road. So it was like, I don't know, maybe six of us. Yeah. Or, and they had a second stagiaire house, which I never even went to. Uh, <laughs> so it's almost good that you guys work so much because you didn't have no money to spend anyway. Yeah. Pretty uh. much. Well, I, I saved a good amount of money. I mean, that was the, the best part was like, fortunately, like one of the dudes, he was from Sweden and he drove to the stage. So he had a car. So oh, he was the only sick. one who had a car. Sick. Otherwise, we would have been stranded, and it's in the middle of nowhere yeah. in Drenuder. So he had a Drenuder? car. Drenuder? Drenuder, yeah. Ooh, okay. Uh, How so, far is that from the nearest kind of So it's like 45 minutes from Ghent, which is where Kobe has his new restaurant. Okay. Chamber Separé. Uh, so yeah, like 45 minutes from there. It's like a five minutes to like the French border, um, but it's in the middle of nowhere. Gotcha. Um, we're talking like a one road town oh, yeah. or are we just talking farm like there is no store. There was like a little town um Yeah, it was a little town. Where did Kobe live? He lived in town. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. He used to live above the restaurant, but by the time I got there, they had converted it, it was like this kind of like loft kind of space. Yeah. They converted it to like a PDR in okay. the guest kitchen. I can see that. Yeah, but I guess he used to live up there. Gotcha. Um so yeah, we lived like ten minutes down the road, six of us. So this guy had a car. So like on the weekends when we weren't like too tired, we would go like we went to Paris twice to like eat just eat at restaurants and shit. Cool, cool. Yeah, so that was cool yeah. to be able to do that. We went to eat at Arpege and stuff. Um, awesome. Cool. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So it was a good you, like experience to go eat at all these spots. Yeah, you yeah. Know? Um I think the the best knowledge uh you know the best experience that you can have is eating. Yeah. I think uh, it um, honestly sometimes teaches you more than, than, cooking. than cooking. Yeah, you man, know? I agree yeah. for sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, but we worked like 8 or 9 a.m. to like midnight or, 
or like one. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you yeah, just go home, go to sleep. Yeah, man. You know, I, I was showering like once a week. Yeah, I mean, you're you're shower. you're at the stagiaire house. Yeah, I'm sure there's there's the guy who's always showering. <laughs> you know, <laughs> What's the, he doing the guy there? who's always yeah. in the fucking. You're like, come on, man. Yeah, right. <laughs> I need to get showered too. Um, oh, yeah, it was it was brutal. What was the was food? Long. What was the food like? It was cool, man. Um, and the good thing was, like, I, I talked to some other people, like, later on when, like, Kobe had some other projects going on. But he was in the kitchen every, every day, yeah. you know, when I was there. And, like, um, full every day? Like, 16 hours with you every day? or Almost. I mean, he would do some other stuff, like, have meetings or whatever. But yeah. he was there a lot. I mean, he was always there for service. Um, was he an intense guy? I saw him yeah. at 12 days. Yeah. Oh, and cool. And it was kind of, like, you know, it was great dinner. Yeah. Um, I just... I felt like he wanted to express himself more. Oh yeah, but he, I think he just held back a little bit. Oh really? We in the, yeah. You know, but I'm I mean, not he's sure. a he's a fun guy, man. I mean, he. Uh, I mean, I really like the way that that he cooks, and like it was very like just like fly by the seat of your pants kind of thing. Like we're figuring it out as we go along. Like we change the menu a lot. Is there any recipes? Actual recipes? <sighs> yeah, I mean, I did some mostly like when I first started. I was like in pastry. So that was all like recipes, mm -hmm. you know, like making ice creams and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, Petty fours and stuff. Um, How many covers? I think it was 40. 40 covers? Yeah. Every then, night fully booked? Um, The beginning of the season, like we started the beginning of the season was like January when I got there. So it was like very slow. The first few services, like I think our first service was like eight or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but then like as it got into spring, it was like 40 covers and then... We started doing lunch when it got warmer out. Oh. And we were doing lunch two days, but I guess when it's like fully ramped up, they're doing lunch like three, I think. Yeah. And so then, yeah, you do like 30 for lunch, 40 for dinner, and you're there eight. So like that was like the whole European thing. Like I didn't even know that that's what – like you do the two services. Yeah. Dude, that's like – That's rough. It's yeah. And rough, then man. as an American, you're not taking your – what? You're one hour of uh, siesta, right? I don't even do that. I mean, we had staff meal, but like, <laughs> there was a, yeah. so so you worked the French schedule with no hour break, no fucking yeah. break in between. That's yeah, awesome. man, it was rough, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and what did so did Kobe know that you guys were exhausted, or did he was he? Or I mean, he was like he was there just with so us, fucking man. crazy that he didn't care. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the Europeans maybe they're used to it. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, oh, I mean, all the, there was maybe only five or six, like, paid people. It was probably 10 stages when I was there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel like those, like, all the European guys, like, they had been working in France and, like, England and stuff. So I feel like maybe they were used to that, like, the double. Yeah. Shift. Um, whoa. I was, I think when I was there, I think I was the only American. There was a Canadian. Oh, okay. Um, but, so I was like definitely like not used to it. I heard that. I was like I could definitely sleep standing up during that time. For sure, <laughs> man. And so uh your three months is up at in the wolf. Do you have a chance to work there or how does that work? Um I don't know. I kinda I was ready to come back. Okay. <laughs> I was fucking ready. Yeah. yeah. Um but I mean it was cool. Like I don't think I would have wanted to work there. It was just like too isolated, too yeah. like, you know. Um but, yeah, man, I remember I, – I just like to tell this story about Kobe because I feel like it, like, kind of says, like, the way that he, like, kind of operates. Like, yeah. there was one service where, like, I was on pastry and he was putting a new dessert on the menu. And it was this thing with, like, quince and, like, we didn't really know what it was going to be. He was kind of doing, like, messing with it all day, like, yeah. tinkering with it. And, like, service starts and he was, like, at pre-service, like, hey, new dessert tonight. Like, we don't know what it's going to be, but, like, by the time the first table's on dessert, like – It'll be done. So, like, during service, he's just, like, bouncing around the kitchen, like, working on this dish. Yeah. And uh, we're like, all right. Like, I don't know what it's going to be. Like, I don't know, like, what mise en place I need. And then, like, by the time I get to dessert, he's like, all right, guys. Like, this is it. And we plates the first one. He's like, do it like this. And then, like, that was the dessert. And, like, i never really seen anyone, <laughs> like, make a dish during service yeah. before. Like, be in the shits during service. Yeah. So, I was like, that's fucking cool. Creating the chaos. Yeah, man. Know? And, like, he would, some nights, like, he would scrub down with us and be like, all right, let's go drink beers. And we'd be like, oh, we're so tired. And he'd be like, let's go. Yeah. So, it was it was good, man. Yeah. Fuck yeah. He seems like a fucking awesome guy. I mean, I only worked with him for one day, and I was, uh, it was 12 days. So, yeah. I was with another chef. Yeah. So, I didn't really get a chance to, you know, work with him. But uh, I do remember this 
sliced raw kohlrabi and apple like sandwich oh, cool. thing that he did. Oh, and nice. it was just like really, really thin slice. But it was the first time where like, you know, I, we, I was coming from the restaurant in Meadowood where everything was really nice and polished and tight. And it was the first time that I'd seen anybody slice kohlrabi and then, le- but leave it like with the sides. Oh yeah. You know, it was oh, very like rough, rough yeah. slicing. Yeah. And I was like, I like this guy's take on fine dining. Yeah. Cause it's like, I'm not going to fucking cut everything perfect and it's going to be delicious. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Kind of like uh Gautier. Gautier yeah. was fucking Yeah. Crazy. That's like, so that spot's like right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Did yeah. you go? Yeah, we went. Yeah. Oh uh, man. How yeah. was it? It was good, man. And like him and Kobe, I think are pretty tied and they're yeah. kind of in a similar situation. Like they both kind of like inherited these restaurants, like from their parents. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, but yes, yeah, so that was like an, an hour or two, I think, yeah. before we were at. Whoa. The dining room's insane. Yeah, Gautier is, is a beast. It was that cool, man. They like, it was just us, like all the stages, like four or five of us. So they yeah. like hooked it up and it yeah. was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, hey, enjoy the fruits of your labor, people. Yeah, that's like you know? the one perk you get. It's the one perk. This, you this work life, at a restaurant, right? you go in, mention it. Don't be a dick and right. say, I work here. <laughs> Bring it up in casual conversation. Oh, we're visiting from here. You know? We had someone call the other day. A uh, guy that had a reservation, I won't say where he worked, but he was like, what do you guys do for industry people? Get the like, fuck out that, of here, dude? B. It's like, what do you do? You know, and then he fucking takes his restaurant down the drain with him. <laughs> dude, if I ever heard anybody, any of my staff talking about my restaurant that way, what do you do? Like calling another restaurant and being like, what do you do for industry? Yeah. Fired. Get done. Get out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Um. So you come back to the States. Where do you go? New York? You back in New York? Or yeah, you go back home. Yeah, I went back to New York. Um, I went back home just for a little bit to yeah. like get figured out. Get your so shit I, together. I had to get a new apartment. Yeah, like for that sure. Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah, so I went back. To, oh, yeah. So that was the good thing. It's like when I was there, um, one of the guys from Co, Carrie, who was the sous chef uh, at the time, he hit me up and was like, hey, when you get back, do you want to you wanna come work at Co? And I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Carrie was a sous chef at Co? Yeah, Carrie Had Hines. you worked with him at Noodle? No, what? but it was good because at the time, Co was like right next to Noodle. Gotcha. So I'd always see those guys, like see him at the bar and like, like we were talking about networking. That was yeah, like fuck yeah, the dude. The best thing I, the best, best thing over I beer. have a drink with those guys. You always have a drink. Yeah. No matter how tired you are. Yeah. That's what I was to all the young cooks out there. I'm going to go it's home and advice, read. Man. It's like, fuck that book. Yeah. <laughs> drink beers. Yeah. And be a dirty pirate sailor cook for a little while. You got to do it for a while. <laughs> you know, bit. for yeah. sure. Um, Carrie opened up Charter Oak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. did you work with him? I very briefly, uh, not while like I worked with him in the sense of like he was R and Ding the the um, the menu. And you were at Meadowood. At Meadowood, yeah, yeah. And I'd be there with him cool. and Cat and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. So yeah, now he's got his place in Miami, in Florida. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm about yeah. to go down there, son. That's a, uh, yeah, it looks that seems fucking... like a really fun place. Yeah, it's popping off right now. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I bet. Every time you see the the footage down there, it's, it's like crazy. no masks, coughing into each other's eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, like all types I don't of know sick about shit. That part. <laughs> Um, so Carrie offers you a job. You say yes. At this point, who's at Co? Who's the chef? Uh, Sean Gray. Sean Gray's the chef. Yeah, okay. I think um, Mitch, uh, who was then the chef at oh, what was the restaurant in Canada that closed? Uh, is it Shoto? Was the one? Um, yeah, Mitch was uh, Mitch and Sean. I think we're like running it together for a little bit. Mitch went up to Toronto to do his thing. Sean like took over Co. I think that was like a little bit before I got there, I maybe mean, a few months or something like that. Yeah. Um. So yeah. And what was uh, your first station at Co? Um. So we were. This is the old spot. So it's just like twelve seats. So Heard. I was like the middle station. So it was only three stations. It was basically. Like the middle station, the end station, and then like the station that the chef worked. So, so it was like it was Carrie. It was Chef One and Two. Yeah, That's, yeah. It was the station. So it was Carrie. Did Eli work there at the time? Eli was there. Yeah. Eli was there. He, had, he was on the or left. He station. started like literally like right when I started. He was on the left. He was on the other station that I didn't work. I got you. Got you. Yeah, I yeah. got to do a podcast with him, man. I'm, yeah, I'm, you got to go to Australia. Sure as hell gonna hell yeah, yeah. baby. I'm gonna go out there in that warm water and spearfish with him. <laughs> yeah, right. You seen those videos? Yeah, it's, it's like Call of Duty that's down there. Wild. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. He's like he's living the good life. I know. Yeah. He's always I'm like, oh, I'm like uh, AM sous chef at a restaurant that does five dinners a week. I was like. That's awesome. <laughs> 
That that's like how many bit. weeks paid vacation you guys get down there? Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's a good job to uh, to raise a kid. Yeah, right. right. That's fucking perfect. Um, so yeah, Eli was there. He just came from Mopesh. Uh, so yeah, Sean, Carrie, and then Josh Pinsky was the other sous chef. Okay. Um, so yeah, so like one of the chefs, Carrie, Josh, or Sean would work like the end station, which was like crudo is like the first course or, and or something yeah and then the middle station which was like protein so like i would do like the meat and fish dishes then the other station was like the other dishes and dessert heard um, that so it was it was cool man i mean that was like when you're like starting out cooking that's the dream right cook for 24 people a night that's yeah it. With, with some of the badass motherfuckers that were around you yeah Carrie, it was cool. eli and then unjo was who i usually worked surface with unjo okay yeah yeah so she was like my other like station partner that's fucking cool and then max who was then the chef of sambar so it was like it was a good fucking crew man max what's the last name uh max ing okay got uh, you so he was the chef of sambar and he still works for momo uh yeah very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Good. On Joe Park, I went to go eat at Cowie. Yeah. And yeah. she also did a dinner with us at um yeah, she at did the Chartered Road. Thing, right? Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Dude. Yeah. One oh, so of the Josh night- came with her to that. Yeah, he, he did. Yeah, he did. So that's Josh. Yeah, 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 I, okay, got you. Because he was yeah. the uh, corporate chef. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me me and him got along really well. Yeah. Um Yeah, that's fucking nuts, dude. It's, yeah, so you know, it was like small a world. Team. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> she came and she was like, oh, Eli says hi. <laughs> and I was like, oh, no shit. Yeah. You know, so everybody knows everybody. Yeah, right. And then uh, how long did you stay at Co? Uh, three, over three years. Three years. Yeah. So you made it to Sue, I'm guessing. Yeah, so that, okay. so yeah, this was at, so I started at 163 First Ave. So that was like the 12 seat restaurant. And then we opened the new restaurant where, where Co's at now. Have you been there? I have not. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I wouldn't. I hadn't even gone to the old spot. Oh yeah. I just was in New York so rarely. Yeah. That every time I went, it was like, you know, you yeah. got to go here, you got to go here, so and many then places. To go, yeah, yeah, and then you end up like, you know, at that time when I was going to New York, you guys were so busy that yeah. if you didn't get there early, you weren't getting shit. So yeah. it was like, fuck. Let's just eat. Fuck. Let's go to K Town. <laughs> yeah. You know. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, then, yeah, we opened the new restaurant. So that was cool because that was like another opening, but like it was basically a new restaurant, but it was cool because we, we went in with like, we had the whole team. It was just the whole team from the old spot and the new spots. So, like everyone knew like what, what to they do, were doing. I was talking to, to Eli about the other day. Yeah. He's like, bet it's a lot harder than co-opening. And I was like, hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Because like we all knew what we were doing. Yeah. So now you have to, you have to literally teach everyone to think like you think. It's, yeah, it's impossible. <laughs> it's gonna take a couple of years, chef. Yeah, right. You're right. <laughs> um, so yeah, so then we opened that, and then um, what prompted you to leave Co? Um, at that point, I was just kind of like, you get to that point where you've been been somewhere for like a little bit too long. Yeah. You start to think a little bit negatively. Uh, you know okay. what I mean? It's Got just you. like, you know, it was time for me to time for me to go. I could see that. I wanted something yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, been plating that that co-egg dish for a little bit too long for way too long yeah <laughs> you know? i hear, you. I hear uh, you so yeah so and then i went on a took some time off did like a road trip kind of thing mm-hmm. drove around where'd you go uh pretty much everywhere i did like a big circle like around the country so very yeah, cool it was good yeah. hell yeah what kind of took, car like, are you rolling months in off honda element fucking <laughs> you don't need a fucking where'd you sleep uh Hotels. Oh, okay. Motels. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Holiday Inns. Motel sixes, baby. <laughs> yeah. Those things are like twenty four dollars a night. Yeah. It's a good deal. <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, I left Co to like do that and then I was like, oh, I'll figure out like what I'm gonna do next night when I get back. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. And so you get back from your road trip and Yeah, I got what's back going through your mind. And then I was trying to work on like trying to open something with a friend. Didn't really work out. It's fucking hard to raise money for yeah, a yeah. restaurant. Were you doing pop ups and shit for it? Not even. We're just like meeting with like just people. I oh, got you. Yeah, We're trying to get Look, some off the ground. Looking at spaces. What would it have been? Uh, I don't know. We were trying to open like a like a combination like nice restaurant slash like dive bar in Bushwick. Okay, that was kind of like our our idea. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I was kind of looking for a thing. I was like working here and there at some spots like of people I knew. Um, to give myself some free time. And then my friend uh, Galen was the CDC at Blanca at the time. So yeah. I went, to, went to, do you know him? Galen uh, Kenimer? I do. I think he came to 12, 12 days. days. Yeah. yeah probably, he yeah. cooked pizza dough. 
Oh yeah, I believe with. Um, oh, he did one with the guy from. Uh, we had a Japanese Soto. show. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember him telling me he was helping him out. Yeah, kind of thing. I was yeah. just like, weird. I wonder brought... how he got in on that. Well, he had, cool. he had to make a uh, pizza dough. For what? I don't know. They had pizza? they had some course where they needed bread. Oh, interesting. And uh, and he just fired off oh, the, wow. the pizza dough from. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So nice. hey, I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. It tastes delicious. So Galen was like running that at the time. So yeah, yeah I went to do. I did. Uh, they just had like a spot in pastry. At, so I, I did some pastry stuff with them. Got you. So that was good. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was cool. Got gotcha. you. And then. Um, so you you're doing this. You're sort of in an interim in limbo. Yeah, it's kind of interim. Yeah, like yeah. I went back to being a cook and making like 12 bucks an hour yeah and you so, were like fuck this yeah i mean it was good I, I was there for about six months or so yeah um but yeah and then josh uh asked me if i want to come back to momofuku and like he was the chef at at nishi and then he like got promoted to corporate chef and was trying to find like the person that was gonna like fill like be the, fill chef the shoes nishi. yeah so he and you like, already know everything so it's easy yeah so he's like yeah. do you want to come come back and be the chef here and i was like yeah um it was his decision totally like um Chang has nothing to do with that. I didn't talk to to Dave about it prior. Yeah, it was kind of like I came back and it was kind of like it just happened. He yeah. just shook your hand and was like, "Hey, you're the chef now." <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like yeah. Um. So yes, yeah, so then I was at Nishi for like over two years until until it closed. <laughs> Got until COVID. Yeah. yeah oh, until okay. COVID. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Um. Now, just recently, this article came out about the Momofuku Restaurant Group and all the let's just say, call it abuse, right? Mm. We all know what it is, um, but it, it was it to the extent that that article draws out or was it just kind of just normal kitchen um, violence, you know? It, it's a combination of both. I mean, uh, yeah, again, I, I don't know how much I can how much I can say here. I mean, I never really, you know, uh, Dave is hard on people. Yeah, you know, for like sure. he was hard on me as a chef at Nishi, especially like, you know, later on, like there was certain things that, uh, you know, that he wanted out of me out of the restaurant and stuff. Um, and, but he could also be supportive too. Like, yeah. I had a lot of really great opportunities like working for that company. So, you know, like I got to do a lot of cool shit and there was like a lot of growth for me. So I can't be like, you know, super upset about yeah, it. Yeah, no. Um, so like all. overall, like I would say like my experience was good. I can't say the same for like everyone else that I know. Mm hmm. Uh, I know a lot of friends that have signed NDAs when they left. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. So hmm. you can say that, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, but, you know, it's restaurant stuff. But when you get to a company that big, like, you kind of, like, can't do that stuff anymore. Yeah, I you guess. can't. No. You know? Yeah. Small um, restaurant is whatever. But yeah. But once you get over there. And, I mean, I'm not – nobody's condoning that shit either. Like, I, right. you know – you don't need to hit anybody or, you know. Yeah, I mean, none of that was happening. Yeah. Like, you know, at least when I was there. Uh, like, for me, the only time I yell um, is when I have to say some shit three times. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, like at some point, yeah. it's like, okay, there's no, wor el no way else I can say this. I, I need to yeah. let you know how I feel right. and how this needs to be, right. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, but the stakes are okay if you can learn from them. Like, exactly yeah, yeah. and also i feel like uh, a lot of what happens with chefs is they'll beat beat down a cook right and then there's no follow-up there's no explanation to that cook right. like do That's you why, understand yeah. why that happened right do you understand why that was wrong yeah because if they don't understand then it's your fault right because you didn't teach them right yeah right yeah and a lot of times like i find like it's also good like talk about that stuff like not in the heat of service you know, oh like, for sure yeah, you know, yeah. like hey this is fucked up like we're gonna fix this and like after service like exactly you know, have we'll talk, talk about like, it yeah yeah when you have like some yeah. more time and most times i mean most of the cooks beat themselves up worse than you could ever do so it's like right. you, you don't really need to, to yeah yeah you can usually tell when someone feels bad enough for sure like, yeah all right you're like i don't even need to say anything because he's he's yeah. gonna think about this tonight when he's at home <laughs> yeah. you know that's so. how you know you got to a good one <laughs> <laughs> for sure um so you're at nishi and did you have any kind of goals when you got there like you're like okay i am now the chef of a restaurant for the first time yeah, ever. it's pretty crazy right? you know <laughs> in new york city yeah like that shit ain't easy yeah um yeah man i mean uh well, it was weird it was like an italian restaurant i had never really done a lot of italian food before okay a lot of pasta 
which is not like my favorite thing in the world. But um, I mean, yeah, we were just trying to do, you know, try to make it interesting, kind of like, you know, that restaurant was a little bit like forgotten about. It was in kind of a weird neighborhood. It wasn't as high profile as like Samba or like Co. So I, I, def- I wanted to try to like race it to that level. Mm-hmm. I don't think we ever really got there, but you know, I think the people that came like liked it. Yeah. So and you, you, you probably know. um got some good cooks coming out of there. Yeah, we had a good team. I that's like yeah. what I would be most proud. Yeah, of. Yeah, that's like, that's yeah. what matters. Yeah, Doesn't like matter. everyone was like we had people stay for like a long time and like. Everyone was super tight. Yeah, like, they stayed for a long time. They they're tight. Yeah, they're willing. They can call you today. Yeah, you know, and you yeah. can talk to them for sure. Um, because I don't know how it is for you, but it's like I still talk to a lot of my old cooks. Yeah, just like because I'm, I tell them like once I'm your chef one time, that's it. Yeah, <laughs> like he, he, sorry, <laughs> you <laughs> got to you got to deal with yeah. this shit. You yeah. know, um, what? So COVID happened, and is that? What made you leave Nishi? Like, would you not have left the company if it wasn't for that? I was actually, I was actually already on my way out. You were already on your way out. Yeah, got you. Yeah. What were you gonna do? Did you um, know? Um. Yeah, I was gonna move down to to Mexico to work on a project actually, and that thing got all messed up with COVID and everything. Got so, you. So then you were like, yeah. So then this. it was like, yeah. And my partner Emma, she had worked for Momofuku as well, and she. She was gonna come to Mexico too, so we were like, we yeah. were like done, you what, know. What what was happening in Mexico? Uh, it was with uh, Mike Bagale, who used to be the ah, chef. yeah, he was working on something. Do you say room. it Bagale? I always say Bagali. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I'm pretty sure it's Bagale. It's Bagale. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna still say Bagali. Yeah, right. That's I, fine. I know what you mean. It sounds yeah. like delicious pasta. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, we we're gonna we we're gonna work with him, but um. So, yeah, we were, like, kind of in limbo because, like, the project where they were, like, oh, it's on hold. And it's, like, oh, it's on hold a little bit more. And then it ended up, like, ended up being scrapped. Yeah. And so then we were, like, you know, in New York, like, quarantine, like, no jobs. Like, just, it's, like, looking for jobs. It's so crazy how many fine dining chefs pivoted to Mexican food. Yeah. Like, all of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a lot, a lot yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was like, he's doing it too. Damn, you know what I mean? It's right. like, all right, let's let's do it. Yeah. Um. Um. Thanks to Bujol. I mean, that's that's the only reason why. Yeah. You know, if it yeah. wasn't for him and putting it on the map like that. Yeah. Uh, and letting you know that you can open a fine dining restaurant and have Mexican cuisine. Like that's not that's not. Yeah, that's cool. You know, that doesn't happen normally. Yeah. So the 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 plan in Mexico is scrapped. And what what are your thoughts? Right, you're in a pandemic. This never happened before. Yeah, your no. projects are fucking. You're losing them by you know yeah, falling. Yeah. What's going through your head? You and your partner's head, right? Yeah, point. I mean, we were. I mean, we were definitely stressed. Like, oh, like what's going to happen next? You yeah, know? we didn't know how long it was going to last. Like, you know, we were both on unemployment, and uh, I mean, fortunately, you know, we got that like uh, bump in the unemployment or whatever the federal unemployment money Hell yeah. or whatever so like we could afford to stay in our apartment so that was good okay but you know that ran out eventually so it was kind of like uh you know what are we gonna do so we were just kind of like looking for jobs and uh you know all over um we decided if like someone got like a good enough opportunity like somewhere else we would like both, we could move both or move whatever yeah. yeah yeah so she got this thing at um at trust four seasons so with uh, eric anderson yeah, baby with eric yeah Woo! So we came out to uh, to Calistoga, and it was weird because like way like back in the day before Nishi, I was like interviewing with Eric to go work with him at Qua. Uh huh. Like uh-huh. Wait, it was kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So now she works with Eric. Cool. Yeah. So she's the GM over there, mm-hmm. and she's the reason why this podcast is happening. Yeah, yeah. She, she hit re- you yeah, up. Yeah. She reached out to me. She <laughs> said, "Hey, DMs. have my husband on right now." <laughs> I said, "Okay." There you go. <laughs> I'm down. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm grateful for all the, you know, listeners sending me people that they want to know about or they think are, um, they regard them in, in a light where they're like, this guy should be showcased. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's cool. And I mean, I had your food tonight. It was fucking amazing. Oh, and you've been so. open for how long? Two days? Three days? Uh, No, it was weird. We were open for like two weeks and then we had to close for some construction stuff because like the dining room still like. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we reopened last thursday got you so, so a total of like three weeks three open weeks. Yeah. yeah 
I mean, it's been stop and the, start. The possibilities are endless in this space, and from what I can see, the dining room already looks better oh, than thanks. what it yeah. used to look like. Yeah, it's you know, be cool. and I, I yeah. mean, there's nothing. There was nothing wrong with Redwood at all. Yeah, uh, it's just how you know two different visions in, in yeah. the same space. So let, um, I'm I'm gonna be looking forward to coming back here yeah. in a year and seeing what you what you've done with it that'd be cool and man. also trust when um, yeah we're not going to get into the opening of that because i don't know when <laughs> who knows but man. when it does open yeah i won't let's yeah, go definitely. have dinner yeah, chef should. that'd be cool man fuck yeah yeah um explain to me the the process of you getting this job that was weird like, um well when i first got out here um i ended up i was working at single thread for a couple months okay um, and uh how'd just, you get that job just knew somebody um i think they were hiring and i i you just apply them yeah yeah. they're like oh momofuku guy hell yeah yeah (laughs) um yeah so i emailed them and yeah um and then some i got messaged by a recruiter on linkedin out of the blue i was looking (laughs) for a job you know but i was just i was a cook at at single thread so okay you know um, well uh did you work with lydia uh lydia that might have been that might have been after your time uh what did she do there uh, she was, I think she was on Garmage, but then she went to the restaurant at Meadowood. Oh, so she so. was, well, I, I, when I first got out here, I stopped at Meadowood too. Oh, no way. At Tram. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I, Lydia, like, oh, and you, st- I think you started the charter. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's what I was saying. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I stopped at Meadowood for two days. Yeah. And, Lydia was the, um, admin, so admin yeah. sous chef. Yeah. Oh, she worked at single thread too. Yeah. She oh, worked cool. at single, single thread as a chef. Yeah. yeah. And then. She went to, I mean, she'd been cooking all over the place. She cooked at, you know, places in Chicago and, um, her husband, Joe, is cooking down in Ojai. Yeah, Joe's cool as fuck. I like, I really liked hanging out with him on my stash. Yeah. Shout out to Joe Maggio. Best stagiaire companion one can have. I'm telling you. (laughs) Right. Yeah. Cause he knows how to keep you busy. Yeah. Cause he hates not being busy. Yeah. I could see that. You know, and when he came to stage, I was the one that he was staging with. Oh yeah, you know, and it was just like, all right, what else? All right, what else? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, man, I got to give this kid like four or five things <laughs> just so he, you know, yeah, um, the, just so he's like on on a task list. Right. Yeah. But uh, shout out to Joe Maggio and Lydia Lee, like they're yeah. fucking amazing, amazing people. Yeah. Um. um so, so get getting so, this yeah. job. Yeah. So yeah, so some recruiter reached out to me on, on LinkedIn out of the blue. Came over here interviewed did tasting saw the space you know what was the tasting like uh it was good it was for like four or five people um i did like four dishes Uh, did you find yourself using the momofuku style um i think it's just like kind of i guess it's inherent yeah yeah it's ingrained in you you, away from it exactly i'm sure like the the chris costow methodology is like exactly right Yeah. yeah Um, I always knew that that happens. So it wasn't like I was stopped absorbing, but at some point I would like kind of take everything with a grain of salt. Cause right. I knew that at the end of the day, like when I go open my restaurant, it's not going to be, you know, Christopher Costa's by David. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not, no, it's yeah. going to be my fucking restaurant. So, right. Yeah. You know, um, so yeah, I mean, I think I, I had done some tastings before uh, for some different things here and there, but um, so yeah, I mean, it was good, uh, and yeah, signed on to this thing. How so, long after the tasting did you get the decision? Um, because that can always be daunting. Kind of like right there. Okay, good, yeah. great. Because I hate you know sometimes yeah. I've seen it where the person does the tasting and then they don't get called back for three days. Oof, They're yeah. just in limbo, That's rough. you know, yeah. telling their wife like, yeah, I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, uh, so man, you're here and, uh, do you plan on obviously not leaving anytime soon? Right. Yeah. 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 Pretty much planted your flag here. Yeah. We're here. I mean, I hope to have my own restaurant someday. You yeah. Know? Do you like, but... uh, California? Or do you think you'd go back to New York? I'm getting used to it. Uh, we'll see. Uh, what, I feel like I what, haven't really. What don't you like about it? It's not New York, man. Of uh, well, <laughs> well, of course it isn't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're one of those people who goes on vacation. And you're like, this sucks. <laughs> like, yeah. Where are the restaurants? <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. I'm a city person. Yeah. But, where, um, where are the bars? Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see. I haven't really gotten to like do that much like stuff because of like covid and now i'm like just here every day yeah so like 
you know, I've never even been wine tasting before. I know that's like the thing to do here. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's free. Oh yeah. It's free for all chefs, industry people. Oh, yeah. Bring sick. your, bring your card over there. Oh yeah. I mean, just as you were networking and you're just like, yeah, what at up? those bars, <laughs> you yeah. go to tasting rooms, yeah, yeah. get hammered and network yeah. over there. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Cool. Cause the thing here in Napa is you never know who the fuck is in your restaurant. Right. Like, yeah. cause everybody's a winemaker. Everybody knows everybody. So, you know, yeah, basically the way I say it is everyone's a VIP. Right. And, yeah. you know, cause you never know. Yeah. You never know. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I still have like a lot of exploring to do around here. You yeah, know? for sure. Mostly just been like stuck inside for COVID and then like working. So, yeah. Well, you get you to know. go to San Francisco is only, you know, an hour yeah. and a half away. Yeah. yeah um, sweet. Sacramento. The, uh, yeah. what is it called? The, um, I think it's like the farmer's market or the farm oh, really? to table capital of the world. No shit. Yeah. They good self self proclaimed. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Because the restaurants are not good. I'm sorry, Sacramento. <laughs> but that's another thing too. Yeah. Sacramento is, I believe, an up and coming town. Yeah. You like it? Is it is it cool? It's okay. It's quiet. Yeah. Uh, from what I've seen. Yeah. Um, it's a city though. But right? it's a it's city. Like tall buildings. Yeah. Right? There's yeah. a lot of tall buildings, but it's almost like it reminds me of Texas. Oh yeah. Like it reminds me of like San Antonio. Well, it's kind of like in the middle of like yeah the land. There's no so, like, water. Uh, I think you know that town needs That's a cool. chef. Yeah. At some point. It's cool. You know. Yeah. So yeah. who knows? Yeah. If anybody's no, out there cool. listening, go take over, baby. Because <laughs> I, I want to be able to. Someone open a restaurant. I want to be able to go to the Sacramento, go out to eat. Yeah. Right, right. now, I can't do that. You <laughs> yeah. know. Fuck. Yeah. But um, chef, I want to thank you. Cool, man. Very Thanks much. For coming. Yeah, man. No problem. All the way from Palm Springs, baby. Yeah, man, that's a fucking drive. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been to Palm Springs. Oh, we just got to go back. It's all right. I rented a fucking sick ass Corvette. Oh man. Yeah. So you, this is what you I drive up today. Yeah. So ba- no, early last night. Oh, but anyways, okay. um, um, that's what I'm doing with the podcast now. I'm gonna if I go travel anywhere, I'm gonna rent a dope car. Yeah. That way, you know, just new experiences. I never yeah. driven that car before, and I'm probably never going to drive it if I don't at least like try to, you yeah, know. Yeah. And That's I'm not cool. going to go to a dealership and get free test drives and then be like, "Oh, I'm good." Yeah, you know what right. I mean? Like, I'm yeah, not yeah, a fucking yeah. freeloader. So, <laughs> anyway, um, come check out the North Block Hotel slash restaurant led by uh, Nick Tamburo over here in Yantville, and. Um, yeah. Your lady's over at trust whenever that opens, but we won't, we won't, we'll stop talking about that. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, signing off everyone. Thank you very much. And this is episode fucking 20, 20, 20 episodes since the start. Uh, so I'm very, very happy that we can do this today. Nick, thank you very much for being on the show. Yeah. Signing off, baby.